and on cybers. One boy, one dragon, the world of adventure. When Aragon finds a polished blue stone in the forest, he thinks it is the lucky discovery of a poor farm boy. Perhaps it will buy his family meat for the winter, but when the stone brings a dragon hatchling, Aragon soon re realizes he has stumbled upon a legacy nearly as old as the Empire itself. Overnight, his simple life is shattered, and he is thrust into a perilous new world of destiny, magic, and power. With only an ancient sword and the advice of an old storyteller for guidance, Aragon and the fledgling dragon must navigate the dangerous terrain and dark enemies of an empire ruled by a king whose evil knows no bounds. Can Aragon take up the mantle of the legendary dragon riders? The fate of the empire may rest in his hands. The prologue, Shade of Fear, wind howled through the night, carrying a sense that would change the world. A tall shade lifted his head and sniffed of the air. He looked human, except for his crimson hair and maroon eyes. He blinked in surprise. The message had been correct. They were here, or was it a trap? He weighed the odds, then said ickily, spread out high behind trees and bushes. Stop never is coming or die. A man who shuffled twelve urgles, with short swords and round iron shields painted with black symbols. They resembled men with bowed legs and thick brutish arms made for crushing. A pair of twisted horns grew above their small ears. The monsters hurried into the brush, grunting as they hid. Soon the rustling quieted and the forest was silent again. The shade appeared around a thick tree and looked up at the trail. It was too dark for any human to see, but for him the faint moonlight was like sunshine streaming between the trees. Every detail was like a sunshine streaming between every detail was clear and sharp to his searching gaze. He remained unnaturally clear and sharp to his searching gaze. He remained unnaturally quiet. A long pale sword in his hand, a wire thing grass curved down the blade as the weapon was thin enough to slip between a pair of ribs, it's tough enough to hack through the hardest armor. The Urgles could not see as well as the shade of Ignor, like blind beggars, fumbling with their weapons and owls screeched for cutting through the silence. No one relaxed until the bird flew past and the monsters shivered in the cold night. One snapped a hood with his heavy boot. The shade hissed in anger, and the Urgles shrank back motionless. He suppressed his distaste, and they smelled it like a fetid meat and turned away. They were tools, nothing more. The shade forced back his impatience as the minutes became hours. The scent must have wasted far ahead of its owners. He did not let the Urgles get up or warm themselves. He denied himself of his luxuries too, and stayed behind the tree, watching the trail. Another gust of wind rushed through the forest. The smell was stronger this time. Excited, he lifted a thin lip and a smell. Get ready, he whispered, his whole body vibrating. The tip of his sword moved in small circles that had taken many plus and much pain to bring himself to this moment. It would not do to lose control now. Eyes brightened under the Urgles to growls, and the creatures no weapons better ahead of him. The shade heard a clink as something hard struck. A loose stone with faint smudges emerged from the darkness and advanced down the trail. Three white horses with riders clambered towards the ambush, their heads held high and proud, and their coats rippling and moonlight like liquid silver. On the first horse was an elf with pointed ears and elegantly slanted eyebrows. His build was slim but strong with a rapier. A powerful bow was slung on his back, a sword pressed against his side, opposite a quiver of arrows, flesh with swan feathers. The last rider had the same fair face and angel features as the other. He carried a long spear in his right hand and a white dagger at his belt. A helm of extraordinary craftsmanship, wrought with amber and gold, rested on his head. Between those two rode a raven haired Oven lady, he surveyed her surroundings with poise. Framed by a long black locks, her deep eyes shone with a driving force. Her clothes were unadorned, yet her beauty was undiminished. At her side was a sword, and on her back a long bow with a quiver. She carried in her lap a pouch that she frequently looked at, as if to reassure herself that it was still there. One of the elves spoke quietly, but the shade could not hear what she was said. The lady answered with obvious authority, and the dogs switched places. The one wearing the helm took the lead. Shifting his spear to a readier grip, they passed the shade's hiding place and first few herbals without suspicion. The shade was already savoring his victory when the wind changed direction and swept toward the elves. Heavy with herbal scent, the horses snorted with alarm and tossed their heads. The riders stiffened eyes flashing from side to side, then wheeled their mounts around and galloped away. The lady's horse surged forward, leaving her dogs far behind, forsaking their hiding. The herbal stood and released a string of black arrows. The shade had jumped out from behind the tree, raised her right hand, and shouted, Barza! A red ball flashed from his palm towards the elven lady, illuminating the trees with a bloody light. It struck her steed, and the horse top with a kind of squeal, climbing into the ground chest first. She left off the animal in human speed, landed lightly, then glanced back for her guards. The Urgles deadly arrows quickly brought down the two elves. They fell from the noble horses, the blood pouring in the dirt as the Urgles crept to the slain elves that they after her. She is the one I want, so the monsters grunted and rushed down the trail. A cry tore from elf's lips as she saw her dead companions. She took a step towards them, then crushed her enemies and bounded into the forest. While the Urgles crashed through the trees, the shaded climbed a piece of granite that jutted above them. From his perch, he could see all of the surrounding forest. He raised his hand and uttered, Blood and a quarter mile section of the forest exploded into flames. Newly, he burned one section after another until there was a ring of fire, a half lead across a lamb all the flames lifted a multi ground resting on the forest, satisfied he watched the ring carefully in case it should falter. The band of fire took in contact with the area of the Urgles had searched. Suddenly, the shade heard shots and a horse scream. Through the trees, he saw three of his charges. All of a fire, more poorly wounded, he caught a glimpse of the elf running from the remaining Urgles. She fled towards the craggy piece of bank at a tremendous speed. The shade examined the ground twenty feet below, then jumped and landed nearly in front of her. She skidded around and sped back to the trail, black Urgle blood dripping from the sword, standing the house with her hand. The horned monsters came out of the forest and hemmed her, locking the only escapements. Her head whipped around as she tried to find a way out. Sitting down, she drew herself up with reasonable disdain. The shade approached her with a raised hand, allowing himself to enjoy her helplessness. Titter. As the herbals surged forward, the elf pulled open the pouch, reached into it, and then let it drop to the ground. In her hands was a large sapphire stone that reflected the angry light of the fires. She raised it over her head, no supporting frantic words, desperate, the shade marked, God is 
A ball of red flame sprang from his hand and flew towards the elf fast as an arrow, but he was too late. A flash of emerald light briefly illuminated the forest and stone vanished. Then the red fire slowed her and she collapsed. The shade howled in rage and stopped forward, flinging his sword at a tree. It passed halfway through the trunk where it stuck. Quivering, he shot nine bolts of energy from his palm, which killed the herbals instantly and ripped his sword free and strode to the elf. Prophecies of revenge, spoken in wretched language only he knew, rolled from his tongue, and he clenched his thin hands and glared at the sky. The cold stars stared back, unwinking otherworldly watchers discussed curled his lip before he turned back to the unconscious elf. Her beauty, which would have entranced any mortal man, held no charm for him. He confirmed that the stone was gone, and then retrieved his horse from its hiding place among the trees. After tying the elf onto the saddle, he mounted the charger and made his way out of the woods. He quenched the fires in his path that left the rest to burn. I was going to go on for twice as long, but that was the first chapter, so we might as well call it there. And then I'm going to turn this into a six-minute audio track, MP3, and, uh, you know, just make go on the old, uh, what do you call it, uh, Microsoft Paint, Windows Movie Maker, Audacity, and, yeah, it'll just be something that no one ever checks out. All right, cool.